Good evening and welcome to Bull Market Talk Show. This is your host, Rian Opsen, and we are actually doing today all technicals. And we're sitting with a legendary Corbus Camp, which will do actually a few currency pairs with us. But one in particular, or a few in particular, is the NASDAQ, Gold, US Dollar Index, British Pound, JPY, the people's favorite, USD, JPY. And then maybe Corbus will throw us a diamond in just to make sure that we will be okay tomorrow. Look, we all know it's Jackson Hole tomorrow, and that will be the big problem. So obviously we need all the experience necessary to take us through there. I will just take actually a short break, and then I'll be back with you with Quivers Camp. Keep your finger on the market pulse with the News Alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with News Alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX. Good evening and welcome back to Bull Market Talk Show. This is your host, Rian Opsen, and I'm live with Corpus Camp. But please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page. Please drop your comments or questions if you have questions for Corpus, and definitely Corpus will, um, will answer all the questions necessary. And there's a link below. Please click on it, register on markets.com, find your account with $250, and then I will actually give your classes for free. Now, please, I will not let you wait. Corbus Camp is live with us, and I will be with him. Good evening, Corbus. Good how are you? I'm good at you. I'm all right, thanks. Thanks for the invite. Always a pleasure to be on your program. Thanks a lot, Corbus. Corbus, just to get the nerves out of the way, please, will the Federal Reserve taper tomorrow? That is the big question, and I, and I think if you, if you try to get an answer, you are guessing. But if I have to guess, I think no. I don't think they're going to taper. I think they're going to keep policies as if I, I think it's too early to taper. But as I said, I'm not the, the decision maker here. It's, it's, it's Powell. So let's leave the decisions to them and let's react on what they are doing. Oh my word. Look, I'm, I'm in favor with the U.S. dollar, but look, if, if Jerome Powell obviously do not taper, what do you think, what will be the outlook for gold then? Uh, if they don't taper, I see gold higher. Um, I've got a few charts for you here. But yes, um, no taper means bearish dollar for me. And if they, they start to taper, I will look for uh, buying, buying dollars at the moment. That is now if they if they taper you buy dollar if they do not taper you go with uh, with the whole run of the of the gold. Yes, um, obviously since the beginning of two thousand and twenty we can see the policies that they have um, they they uh, put in place is that the dollar is declining aggressively, and if they're going to keep the policies the same, I can't see that the dollar will react differently. If the policies are the same, the dollar will react the same, and that is basically what's happening. I absolutely agree with you. Any charge that you might show us on gold if, for example, if they do not taper? Yes, let's look at it. All right, so I'm going to start with gold because that's the one that you're asking for. Right, so yes. Now, obviously, round we uh, is my chart on there. Can you see it? Um, just on the share button. All right. Um, there you are. Just gonna get it on here. There we go. This one and it's that. It's normally a bit down. Good. There, I get it. Perfect. Okay. That got us on scene. Right. Right. All right, Ryan. Um, this is a chart of gold. Obviously, the question is if you're talking long term or, or short term, because short term, obviously, the Fed. Tomorrow or over the weekend will have a, a short-term effect. But longer term, I do see gold going higher. And the reason I say this 
is because this little part here for me is not a reversal. It is what we call a continuation pattern. And obviously technical analysis is a study of charts and patterns and, and structures. This is actually what we call a cup and handle in the making. And it seems oh. to me that gold is making a, a right uh, handle here. And if we break that resistance at 2,100, 2,200, I cannot see that gold will turn around. But this to me is just a short term pullback. The market is still bullish. We're still bullish on gold. I cannot see that gold will just turn around here. If it starts to break 1,500, 1,400, then I will relook at my analysis and I will take another side. For now, gold is bullish. Do, 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 is that is like in the terms of like when every look <laughs> now, so you might think that gold will see all time highs. Yeah, I do see um, gold going all time highs. I'm not going to go um, against the trend. I mean, gold is okay. bullish for the last six years. So there are certain levels that need to break down for the bears to come in and say, "Listen, we're now in a in a, in a gold bearish. Let's call this trend." Um, but for now, the bull, the bull, uh, gold bull trend is still in place. I'm not going to go against the gold bull trend, especially with with the weakening dollar. If they don't got to change those policies, I'm going to stay with the bullish um, gold scenario. Uh, it, if there is, for example, let's say Jerome Powell taper tomorrow, just just actually for interest sake. Um, if Jerome Powell, where do you think possibly will gold be? But as you said, that it looks like there's a bullish trend. But let's say, for example, there's a price that comes through and they say they taper. Uh, okay. Where do you think gold will end up? I will still stay bullish, but I'm going to get you technical levels here, technical price levels. 1450 um, is a level for me. If they taper tonight and we get a, a, a dollar bullish scenario, um, I can see gold to 1500, 1455, but I think. That will be only in a year's time, two years' time, and then maybe they're going to change the policies again. Policies don't stay long. Um, but, yeah, 1,400, 1,500 if they taper. But uh, for now, if they don't taper, I will look just for uh, gold bullishness. That's actually a very good thing that you actually put there. So if they taper, gold goes down. We might see it at around that levels. If they do not taper, we see basically gold just exploding. Yes, look, this is a this is a long term view of gold. But if I drop down to a smaller time frame, um, Ryan, let me just uh -huh. take this off. for the present moment, for this next week or so. Obviously, we cannot trade, or not many traders are long term traders. For now, uh -huh. sixteen eighty is in place. I'm bullish above sixteen eighty for the next week or so. Um, uh -huh. Taper or no taper. If sixteen eighty goes, then obviously the next level for me is fourteen fifty. Hmm. All right. Okay. And yeah, if it breaks fourteen fifty, the next one. Ooh, all right. Okay. Look, I'm actually taking notes myself here as I'm actually looking at the technical levels. It looks actually quite easy. I see someone is actually dropping something here. When fundamentals and technical legend meet. The man who taught me the Elliot wave. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the for the comment. And then we're looking at the dollar index. Um, I would say let's say taper and no taper, but let's start with no taper. All right. All right. This is the long-term chart, daily chart as of the beginning of 2020. As I said, this is clearly a bearish trend because of those monetary policies. If those policies stay the same, Ryan, I will see the same effect on the dollar index. If they do taper, I do see a little bit of bullishness. I've got actually two scenarios here that's going to play out. It's very interesting. This is just my opinion. Taper or no taper? That is my analysis. If they taper tonight, one up, then the reversal will come. And if they, um, the other scenario is that uh, the bearish scenario just continues from here. So up or down or just down. I do not see a bullish dollar uh, coming into play. I do see this as bottom pickers or people that 
starting to buy the dollar because of those good numbers that came out the last few weeks. But I think it's premature. I still feel this bearish trend is very much in place. So, yes, taper up and then down, no taper, just down. Huh. Because, uh, the, the, you know what, it's actually very interesting what, you, what you're actually saying. It's like if they, if they taper or no taper, because there is wide speculation on the fundamental side, that inflation is there to stay. Yeah, that I, 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 yeah. I personally don't think inflation will come down. Where, whatever Jerome Powell is saying is transitory in all of the yes. nonsense that he was talking about. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. It, it, it absolutely doesn't make sense to me. And, um, yeah. And, yeah, and, and what you say, I think there will be a temporary lift in the dollar and then it will just come slamming down. And, and honestly, I must say, I, I do confirm with the, with, with the analysis that you put on. Yeah, let's see what happens. Obviously, um, traders must understand the Fed is moving. They can, they can do with the currency what they want. Our job is not to predict what they are saying tonight. Our job is to look on Monday what they said and then act on, on what they said or decided. So I'm going to wait for it. I've got no open positions over the weekend. I'm going to wait. I'm not going to stand in front of the moving train. You can't fight the Fed. <laughs> But whatever they are doing tonight, I will make that decisions next week. <laughs> yeah, that is actually a very good point, as you put it. Don't stand in front of the moving train. And yeah. on the other one um, is the, the, the NASDAQ or the US Tech 100. What, what is your views on that one? All right. Yeah, you are. There are a few levels that I've marked on your round. Obviously, I'm going to bring in the lock scale here. Um, it's just something that I use. I want you to look at these levels. Um, I'm just going to take this away. These little circles that I've put in place, I call this slope analysis. The, moving, the market is moving in slopes as of 2013. So we can see all these parallel lines working with the NASDAQ, and it's just creeping higher. So first of all, what kind of market are we in? We're in a bullish market. That's it. There's no reason that you should, should be looking for selling opportunities. Why do you want to sell something that just goes higher and higher and higher? And a few levels here on the NASDAQ that I've marked of 14,700, 14,450, and very important, this 14,000 area. That was a major top um, that broke. That, I believe, is going to be support if we come down. If we start to break lower there and we go to 12,200, then only I'm going to look for selling opportunities on NASDAQ. But for now, while above 14,450 and 14,700, I was just buying the pullbacks, buying the pullbacks. Ah, all right. Because honestly, I also think like that because they, there's way much uh, liquidity in the market, especially from the US side. I mean, these guys yeah. have been printing about, about 120 billion per month. Yes, banks are swelling with money. Whatever taper is coming, I doubt that will be the issue because the banks are full of money. Yeah, and people are using the money to, to put in the stock market. So if, if there's a, a oversupply of money, that money must go somewhere. And it seems to me that they're just going flooding it into the into the um, S and P and into the Nasdaq. Exactly, and then you have other people that actually shoot themselves to the moon. Like Steve, Steve, what's his name? Bezos and uh, what's the other guy that went racing to the moon? I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. It's, it's crazy stuff at the moment. Um, it's, it's weird times. It's unknown territory. Um, but like I said, whatever decisions that I make, um, I will react on their decisions. After the decisions, I'm not, I'm not going to predict what they are doing. I think it's stupid or not wise to do it. Um, don't predict the market. Act on what the market is doing. That's our job. Uh, absolutely, I agree. I, I will actually come back. I will just take a short break. Um, and then we will do actually the British uh, British JPY and US dollar JPY. I will just take a short break. Please, people, don't forget, drop your comments, drop your questions for Kubus Camp. I must say it all actually goes in favor with the fundamentals. So just take a short break. I will come back now. <music> Keep your finger on the market pulse with the news alerts tool. 
Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how new sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with News Alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX. Good evening and welcome back to Bull Markets Talk Show. We have actually an excellent show with actually with Kubis Camp is going through all the technical analysis, and we will basically do now the British pound and um, British pound JPY and US dollar JPY. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page and please drop your your questions so that Kubis can answer them. Kubis, we are back and we are looking at the British pound and JPY. Please take us away. All right, British pound, JPY. Now, there are a few things here that interest me on this chart. Um, Rian, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to put in this line as well. So remember, technical analysis, all about trend, all about structures and patterns. And the pattern that I can recognize here, very important here, very aggressive. This is a long-term chart. Obviously, we cannot trade long-term, but I start my analysis on a longer-term view so that I can know where the levels are. And this, to me, is a very nice corrective pattern. Now, one of two things can happen here. We can just go lower from here. We can break down to these support levels at 124. That's a huge um, distance to travel. But we cannot trade this. Now, very interesting to see on this daily chart, against that past resistance in, when was this? 2018. Look right. at this. This is a head and shoulders pattern. That is usually a trend reversal pattern. But the pattern Ooh. cannot be traded or the pattern is not confirmed while the neckline is holding. And that neckline is at 148.39. So I want to see the neckline break here before I can, I can say, all right, this trend has changed. For now, the market is trapped between 156, 148. And obviously, FX traders trade on smaller time frames. And I'm just going to drop to a smaller time frame. So that is my longer term view. Those two scenarios. Right. For now, I am looking at more downside on the British pound, Japanese yen, a little bit of pullback, something like this. And I'm looking for structure like this. So structures and patterns, Ooh. we can forecast as much as you want, but it's the actual trading method that you're looking at um, that will decide if you are a longer term trader or short term trader. Aha, uh -huh. it, it, it makes absolutely sense because um, if I look also, there's quite a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the Delta variant um, that is pushing around. We have also the inflation story that comes around. And normally your Japanese yen behave actually well when there's uncertainty. So I absolutely agree 100% with you there. Now, if, if they are going to run to the Japanese yen futures, um, if that um, stock market is going to decline, if the stock market is going to decline, they're going to run to Japanese yen for safety. These yen pays are just going to drop. True, true. Um, there's a question, Kubus. Mr. Kubus, do you see US dollar ZAR touching 15, 16 right. soon? It's very interesting to see, um, Ryan. I just, uh, just um, later in the program, if, you, if I want to compare the dollar index and gold for you, we didn't do that. But I want you to see how closely correlated the RAND at the moment is with the structure of the dollar index. And I'm going to delete all of these lines just to make the chart clear for you. Right. It's basically the similar chart. I mean, really. So if I'm looking at what the dollar index is going to do, and I'm going to put these charts two together for you so that let's do this one and I'm going to bring right. up the dollar index. Let's take this off. Mm -hmm. Right, here we are. I think this is about it. There we go. Now, at the top is the RAND and the bottom is the dollar index. See how similar this is. Oh, 
Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent similar. Now, if I am looking at the dollar index, the one at the bottom, to decline, right. if they do not taper, I am looking at the rand going lower into the thirteen rand area. I don't think it's going to get to sixteen rand just now. Maybe not this week or so. I'm looking more downside on the dollar rand because I'm looking lower. All dependent on what the fundamentals come out over the weekend. Mm, 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 mm. Look, oh, so we're looking at a thirteen oil prices dropping. Things look lovely in South Africa. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just the only thing our withdrawals will be a problem because it's in US dollars. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Ryan, that is that's what the charts are saying. Um, but like I said this afternoon, you know what? Jerome, Jerome Powell is telling you today that he does not care. He's immune to your stochastic. He does not care about your stochastic. He's the boy in charge. And that's it. <laughs> he decides what's happening. The bloody bugger. But well, um, as you said, don't predict the market. And I absolutely agree with that. The last one, and then maybe you will give us a diamond trade. But the last one, the US dollar JPY. Um, uh, that one is also a favorite. This will actually be my diamond as well. Aha. All right. So longer term view um, around always longer term view. I actually have just only three steps that I take. I do. You, you can write it down. AST, analysis, setup and trigger. So I do my analysis. I have an idea what I'm looking for or looking at. I read the info, then I have the setup, and I will only trade on the setup if it triggers. A setup can be a price pattern or whatever. So we can do the analysis, but it doesn't mean I will actually trade it. But longer term view, I'm looking for more upside on the dollar yen into this 120 area. All right. The structure to me, maybe a pullback. While we're above 104, 102, I'm looking for the dollar yen to rally into this 120 area. That's a long term view, so I know what the trend is. Then I drop to a smaller time frame, and I have prepared this chart, actually. Just want to get this on here. Right. For the near future, let's call this short term. While 11080 is holding, I'm looking for the dollar yen to drop into this 108.50. And mm -hmm. from there, I'll be long, looking for long opportunities. And it's just based on patterns, structures, and I wonder what is going. Remember what I said about the dollar index. I'm looking for a rally and then the decline. Now, if, this, if the dollar oh, rally right. it might, might probably come down first, they will run the Japanese yen futures. Obviously, dollar yen chart will go down. It all makes sense. They're all correlated. So for now, my diamond of the day, 11080 is holding. I'm looking for a move lower back into this 10850 area. Oh, it, it, it absolutely makes sense. Even if, if you go with uh, with gold, you're looking at the South African rand. It, it, it makes sense because, the, honestly, I, I don't think inflation will go away. And yeah. obviously, if there's inflation, then a currency loses its value. And um, yeah. that is yes. where, whether we like it or not, dollar will lose its value. It will. And I, I don't think it's going to change in the very near future. That really, they they must um, they must up interest rates. They must stop the um, asset buying before the dollar will turn the trend. I cannot see like the dollar is just continuing the trend. I'm not going to go against the trend if the policies don't change. Now that, that there, I absolutely agree with you, and and it looks like it will continue um, because you have also a, a infrastructure bill that comes through. Um, which is totally unnecessary. I don't know where the hell the Americans will get the money, but they're going with it. So, but I must say it is it is a big problem. But Corbus, I must say your analysis make absolute sense. Everything fall in line. Um, I hope the viewers love it. I love the questions that actually were flowing, <laughs> flying with me. Um, but honestly, Corbus, we need to do definitely next week when Jackson Hall is finished. Yes, Monday. Monday, we need to go again with this one. Yeah, it will be it will be interesting to see after the weekend that we can talk again and see what actually happened uh, before and after show, and that will be that will be brilliant, and then we can make decisions after the fact. Absolutely, I, I'm with you with that, Kubis. Kubis, 
Thanks a lot. All the best with the bad weather in Cape Town. Thanks, <laughs> Yeah. And um, that's it from our side. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Quibus, have a lovely evening, and then I will see you definitely on Monday. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for the show, and keep it up. Very good show. Thanks a lot. Uh, people, that was it from Quibus. Um, someone was actually dropping now a comment um, before and after show would be nice. Definitely, I will do my absolute best to get Quibus back on again with a um, before and after show. And thanks a lot for following so that you know what is going to happen also afterwards. That is it from my side. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page so that you get your notification. So that is it from my side. I will see you guys tomorrow at one o'clock. Bye-bye.